Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another video in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And today we're covering the Ground War Assault Battles. And we're doing Tier 1 in this video. I will be following with a second video where I discuss Tier 2, which is the bonus tier. In these Ground War Assault Battles, you have to use either Ewoks or Resistance or Ugnaught or some combination thereof to defeat eight waves of Separatists. And if you do so, the first time you do, you get a huge wave of character shards from the Separatist faction. Uh, you also get a nice little chunk of credits and a little bit of gear, and we'll see at the end of the video how this works out. Now, the way to do this traditionally is with a Resistance team, if you have Jedi Training Ray, or if you have uh, Finn with his Zeta, you will blow through these. They are really good as a faction. So most people have that, and I encourage you to do that. But I'm still working on my resistance team. I don't have them ready yet. So I had pieced together my Ewok squad to defeat the ATST battle, and I thought, well, why not give it a shot to take on the uh, the ground war battle? I've never come close to beating this thing. I've only ever gotten to about the second or third wave. My team was that terrible. But now that my team is a little bit better, I thought maybe I can give it a shot with my slightly upgraded team and the fact that I could mix in R2-D2 here because he is resistance, I thought would help as well because he's really well geared for me. So the team that I used, Chief Chirpo Leadership, Ewok Elder, Low Gray, Wicket, I have him at four stars, and R2-D2. And you can see R2-D2 is very well geared. He's a top five character. I do have my number crunch Zeta on him. And if you've got R2-D2, chances are you've got him well geared uh, also because he's one of the best characters in the game. And then other than that, I have just a mix of the Ewoks here. None of them are maxed out in any way. You can see barely uh, level 85 for, for just one of these characters. Uh, gear 7 for most of them, one gear 8. And I did put my arena mods on them. So their speed is pretty good. But even in terms of their skills, I have less than half of the Omegas on these guys. And none of the Ewoks have any Zetas. So there's the stats you can see. Uh, what this team composition is. There's other ways to do it, but I think Ewok Elder is really important. His heal and his revive is really good. I like the Chirpa lead, but you could probably do it with Tebow as well if you went with uh, Tebow and, and I think Poplu with the taunting. You could probably get there. Uh, Low Gray has Daze, which is very important, and some turn meter manipulation, and Wicket is a good damage dealer, calls to assist, and that kind of thing. So with the team out of the way, let's get right into the battle with Wave 1. And starting off here, uh, four of the B1 battle droids, and the key here, again, obviously, if you have the, the Zeta resistance squad, you're just getting exposes and you're rolling with the turn meter train. I'm going to approach this from the standpoint of a weaker squad, Ewoks, something like that. The big threat is burst damage. Um, because we have low health, they can get taken out easily if they get any concentrated fire or assistance fire. And thankfully, there is a revive available, but it's on a slow cooldown. So if two Ewoks go down, it's going to be tough to recover. So the B1s have calls to assist, take them out one at a time. You shouldn't have much trouble with the first wave. In the second wave, it's the first of these new enemies, the shield generator droids. There's these support droids that pop up throughout the waves. And you don't really want them taking turns because they hand out some powerful buffs, either lots of protection, or I think they can give offense up or some other things, depending on the mark of the droid. Basically, you want to take those out first if you can. And then you need to juggle because the B2 Super Battle Droid can gain its Relentless Barrage buff. It can gain 100% turn meter whenever any other enemy is attacked on the field besides a B2 Super Battle Droid. So you have to be careful. If you attack a high damage dealer, there's a chance you're going to get the B2 to 100% turn meter. And B2 has that area AOE Dispel. So Ewoks are good with their buffs, their speed up, retribution, and uh, one bad timing for B2 Super Battle Droid can wipe all of that out. So it's a little bit of a balancing thing. You could get unlucky. Again, this team beat it, and I'll show you how, but there's a little RNG involved here. Uh, you could take a bad hit or get your buffs up at the wrong time and then get them wiped out by a B2. So if, if you're close to this and you fail once, don't get discouraged. There is a little bit of luck, a little bit of randomness mixed in here when you're trying to skirt the edges of uh, being able to complete these battles without a well-geared or powerful squad. So 
uh, low graze days is very, very good. If you get days on the super battle droids, they can't ever get the relentless barrage. They can't gain the turn meter. So anytime you get days out, it's a good chance to then switch your focus and try and burn down one of the higher damage characters because you can do so without fear of triggering the B2 super battle droid. So the first three waves, not really challenging. Wave four, as usual in these eight wave battles, is one of the bigger hurdles. And then of course, eight wave is the biggest hurdle. So for wave four, we've got two of those buff droids. I took the opportunity to call an assist. Calling R2-D2 to assist is uh, good for my squad, A, because he's the most well geared, and B, he has stun on his basic. So every time he attacks, you have a chance to stun, and that's pretty good uh, if you can stun the the assistance droids because even if they get a turn if they're stunned they won't get to hand out those buffs and so it's not as crucial to take them down as quickly if you can get some stuns on them but after that then you have to balance if you can one shot the b1 droid probably a good idea to do it uh, if he's going to take a turn but otherwise you should focus on getting the b2s down so they're not dishing out area damage again um, we want to protect the Ewoks because they're the weaker links here. So if I ever use R2 smokescreen, I'm probably going to use it on R2-D2 as he's got so much extra health and protection compared to everyone else. And we can see here we do have Chirpa now being weak. Uh, you want to save your Ewok Elder. There's the heal and the res. You want to save the heal. It's on a long cooldown. I probably could have used it here on Chirpa to get him back up, but it also has a debuff cleanse. And so you can get buff immunity put on your characters once again from the B2 Super Battle Droids. So that's a really good time to use the uh, the heal from Ewok Elder. It'll clear the buff immunity and it'll also do the heal. So another good uh, good twist to having Ewok Elder here. Great healer, great reser for this Ewok squad. And I want to encourage Ewoks. I, they're not meta. They're not great in arena. You can make them work if you do a ton of investment. I've seen them poke their way into the top 50 or so uh, if you go all in and get all their Zetas and, you know, max them out. Um, and you don't need to do that, but they are a fun faction. They are the only faction that can get you through the ATST battle, and they're also useful here. So maybe pick them up. You don't, again, the point here is you don't need to invest a lot. I'm not even at gear eight for these guys, just gear seven, and Ewok Elder is at gear eight. So you can give a little bit of investment and then you'll be able to participate in that ATSD battle in the ground war if your resistance team isn't up and running and uh, and kind of increase your experience of what you can play with and get away from some of those meta teams, again, without investing too much of that valuable gear in them. So we've moved through wave five. It was pretty easy. We're on our way to wave six. Just one B2 super battle droid here. And we got the days on him early so we can focus on the damage dealers again. I like to get rid of the B1s because they have the call to assist. Uh, watch out for the spy. The Gene Ocean spy on the right here can deal some pretty big damage. Uh, if he gets a crit, it can go for a couple thousand, and that's about the health that we have on some of these characters. So also a target of opportunity is the, uh, is the Gene Ocean spy, but beware, it can go into stealth. So if you're going to try and attack it, you want to try and be able to know that you can take it out before you give it a chance to go into stun because then you've just wasted some damage on your end uh, without taking a gun out of the fight on the other side. So we've cleared all the support. The Jane Ocean Spy is the last one left. We take him out and we're on to wave seven. I don't use the event ability. I really don't find it useful. It basically supercharges one of your characters, but I think it takes all the turn meter of all your other characters. So the only thing I would say is if you're going into a tough wave, and you used some of your valuable cooldowns, if you want to slow your team down, you can use it to just cycle through basics. If there's one enemy left and you just want to use basics and get your cooldowns off of uh, cooldowns so they're ready for the next wave, maybe you could pop it then. But other than that, I didn't find a good use for it. I know uh, there's opportunities for using, I think Scavenger Ray can get big hits if she uses it and there's some strategy there. But again, for this team, I would stay clear of it. I didn't really find a good use for it. Another pretty simple wave to get through. Save your cooldowns, and here we go. Wave 8. Count Dooku, Asajj, uh, a Genosian Soldier, two of the Magna Guards, and then one of those buffer droids. So again, I try to get the droid, the buff droid out first to make sure it doesn't give out. I think this one gives protection up, and it gives a ton of protection up. And we don't have high damage dealers here on this squad. So getting rid of that first is good. One thing to note, Dooku is not his standard 
character where he counterattacks everything. If you face him in arena that another player has, he's a counterattack machine. Every attack basically triggers a counter. That doesn't happen in this battle, thank goodness. So you don't need to worry about that. You can attack him pretty much without impunity or fear of counterattack. I think Asajj is one of the biggest threats in terms of damage because she has a big AoE. She has a cleanse. Um, she can she can wipe your buffs out on your characters. So once you get the buff droid out, then I would get Asajj, and then you can kind of work through the rest. The Magna Guards also have an AoE, but it is weaker, so it's not a big threat. And I would save Count Dooku for last. Um, he just he's not a threat on his own. He can stun, but it's only a single target stun, or maybe if he gets lucky too. And he just has his normal sword attack, which uh, isn't very powerful either. So. He's the least threatening one, I think, here. You can save him to the end. He doesn't counterattack. And just like that, we've cleared Ground War Assault Battles with this very, very undergeared team. And wow, look at those rewards. Two, four, six, eight, ten characters of at least five shards. We got a ten in there. We got a seven in there. So really good rewards here. A nice chunk. 1.9 million in terms of credits. Uh, so really good, um, really good event here. I encourage you guys, if you don't have your Ewok squad quite developed, give a little bit of investment into them, and you'll be able to get there and complete this, again, if you don't have resistance. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, you can subscribe to Meet City Gaming for your future Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.